Hello everybody, welcome to another video where we're just going to explore abnormal X-ray interpretation. Similarly to the video about CT head interpretation, this is just going to be a rapid run through of some of the basic skills required to interpret an abnormal X-ray. Again, it's non-specialist, so it's aimed at the level of an F1 or an F2, and we're just going to go through some of the indications in pathology. So starting with the basics then, as ever, make sure that you check that the patient details are correct. So you want to be looking at the right x-ray, the right time, the right date for the right patient, and check the scan details as well. So is it a standing? Is it a supine? If you don't know the patient, then try and check the clinical details, because that's just going to help guide your interpretation. Now, before we look at pathology, we should probably look at indications for abdominal x-ray. Now, the indications are listed there, mainly related to bowel and bowel dysfunction. Most notably, obstruction is probably the most common reason that we request abdominal x-rays. Volvulus is a type of bowel obstruction. Toxic megacolon you see in lots of colitis and things. Foreign bodies, that might be ingested foreign bodies or it might be rectal foreign bodies. And you can use it for some large kidney stones as well, although that is quite uncommon. One of the key things to note, though, is that requesting an abdominal x-ray is not appropriate if you think a patient is constipated. But as you may well notice from practice, we're doing abdominal x-rays less and less. And that's because of the rise of CT. CTs are readily available in hospital. They give, frankly, better images in much more detail. And so ultimately, if you're able to, and if you have a high enough clinical suspicion of a significant pathology as listed before, a CT is likely to be much more useful for your patient. Often radiologists will use findings on abdominal x-ray to help essentially triage CTs and triage their urgency. But more often than not, if you have a positive, in inverted commas, uh, abdominal x-ray, i.e. you find bowel pathology, then you're likely to need to follow that up with a CT anyway. So therefore, as an F1 or an F2, it's important that you try and be pragmatic. Discuss the case with the radiologist, bearing in mind that a CT is likely to be more helpful, and make sure you get the most appropriate imaging at the most appropriate time for your patient. Now, going back to the abdominal x-rays themselves, we're just going to have a quick look at image quality. Now, ideally, you want the entire abdomen visible on the film. And that means from the top of the diaphragm right down to the bottom of the pelvis. Uh, but as it mentions there, sometimes if you're doing an x-ray for to, to look for a foreign body, one of the key things, certainly with ingested foreign bodies, is are they below the level of the diaphragm, i.e. are they in the GI tract rather than the chest, rather than the trachea or the bronchi? And so actually, if you do a sort of a high abdominal x-ray, you can reduce the radiation dose that you're giving that patient. And it's likely to answer the clinical question that you have. When looking at a abdominal x-ray, there's a couple of things to pay attention to. The image there shows a normal abdominal x-ray. So what you're looking at, particularly when you're when you're going through your images here, you want to look at the, the bowel and the gas pattern in particular, bearing in mind that you can only see bowel if there is gas present in it. Note a stomach bubble. That can often be difficult to interpret. It might appear to be large bowel. And look for any, any obvious masses. Check for calcification either of arteries or other vessels in the abdomen, uh, abdominal region. Uh, check for kidney stones, ureteric stones and bladder stones, and make sure you look for foreign bodies as well. Now, it's often difficult to differentiate large and small bowel on abdominal x-rays. But there's a couple of clues we can use to help, help us do that. Now, one of the key things is size. So small bowel tends to be quite small, as it says there, up to about three centimetres in size. Large bowel up to about six, except for the cecal area which can be up to nine centimetres. So three, six, nine are the, the numbers you might want to have in your mind when looking at abdominal x-rays. Again, remembering our anatomy, it's a, we would expect large bowel to be generally peripheral to the image uh, and small bowel generally more central, although patients may have abnormal anatomy. But one of the key things we use is the mucosal folds. Now, I don't want to butcher the pronunciation of the, the Latin term there, so I'll just ignore it. But the mucosal fold of small bowel stretches across the, the entire diameter of the bowel, whereas the the haustra of the large bowel don't. They only go part way across. So we can sometimes use that bit of information to differentiate between small and large bowel. And that becomes important as we go on to look at some pathology. So there the image shows an example of a small bowel obstruction. That's suggested by the dilated loops and the prominent mucosal folds, often described as a coiled spring type appearance. So you can imagine a, a spring being squashed together. Now, even though those loops are dilated, they're not as wide as the large bowel loops. So that's how we can say that's a small bowel obstruction. Whereas in this example, we see a large bowel obstruction, which again is suggested by the dilated loops. And we know it's large bowel, A, because of its location, and B, because of the size. The next examples here show what's known as volvulus, which is where the bowel itself twists on its mesentery, causing an obstruction as it does. Uh, and these are either sigmoid, in which case you get a coffee bean-like appearance, or they can be sequel, in which case they have more of a fetal-like appearance. Toxic megacolon, it's, it's rare, but it is important because it's potentially life-threatening. 
This is a condition where the, the large bowel dilates quite significantly, often seen in colitis patients, so inflammatory bowel type patients. Toxic megacolon gives a, gives abdominal bloating as the, as the colon is enlarged. You can get pain, you can get a fever. There's often a degree of, of hypovolemic related shock, if not septic shock. And one of the key complications, which is why we need to be worried about toxic megacolon, is the risk of bowel perforation because of that extreme dilation. Moving away from the bowel and quickly touch on kidney stones. So if you're worried about renal colic, we should really be doing CTKUBs as first line, as our first line imaging. X-ray is essentially quite a large dose of radiation without giving you the answer that you need. And they often won't pick up small stones, whereas CTs are much more sensitive. But you might see abdominal x-rays used in more of an outpatient setting, where if you're known to have a large kidney stone, it's sometimes helpful to be able to essentially track that stone's migration through the through the ureteric system, or the absence of it migrating, i.e. it being stuck in the kidney. Otherwise, foreign bodies is the final thing we'll, we'll talk about. So these can be accidental ingestions, often seen in children and uh, dementia patients, for example. We do also see it as a form of deliberate self-harm. Stuffers and pushers, so if you're trying to conceal drugs and uh, adult activities, which I'll, uh, which I'll let you use your imagination about. Just before you request an abdominal x-ray, make sure that the, the foreign body you're looking for is actually radio opaque. Otherwise, it's not going to show up on, on imaging, obviously. And then in terms of management, more often than not, we don't do anything. As, as I mentioned before, as long as it's below the diaphragm, it's in the GI tract. Most foreign bodies will just sort themselves out. But if the substance is potentially toxic... Or as we sometimes see in children, if you ingest several small magnets, the magnets can clamp together and cause obstruction. So those are going to need to be removed surgically. But as ever, make sure you're checking tox base that you're using the most up-to-date guidelines. So just to summarise that uh, quick run-through of information then, the most important thing to be aware of around abdominal x-ray is actually whether it's the most appropriate imaging modality for your patient. CTs are better, although they do have a higher dose of radiation. So be pragmatic, discuss with your radiologist, get the appropriate imaging at the appropriate time for your patient. When looking at abdominal x-rays, make sure you check the image quality, make sure you check the patient details, measure the bowel, ensure it's not dilated. Have a look for other key pathologies such as volvulus and toxic megacolon. And remember just to have a look out for calcification, stones, foreign bodies as well. And as with all imaging, just be slow, be boring, be methodical. 